set a protocol of meta and meta uh, knowledge sharing session. As we say, it's not knowledge sharing. We doesn't mean that knowledge sharing by us only, knowledge sharing by every participant, panelist, presenter, each and every person. So we say knowledge sharing between us. And the our always and everywhere is to promote sharing the experience and that we promote regularly. So welcome to today's topic, CS and internal audit. As you know that uh, CS can also do internal audit. And uh, that's why we thought that this can be the area. And I know many CS are doing like us internal audit. But still, we can promote this area. And today's topic, we actually selected as a for CS and internal audit. And uh, with us, our panelist is Mr. Abhijit Sharma. Welcome, Mr. Abhijit. Thanks for your time. To yeah. introduce you formally, uh, and then we have our own Bala, who doesn't now in, need introduction. Friends, today our own Sudhakar is not there because he has some prior commitment or some, that's why he is uh, unable to join. And then now welcome Mr. Abhijit to formally introduce. Mr. Abhijit is a follow member of ICAI. He is at the, uh, he has an experience of more than 15 years in the field of internal audit, great, from industry to consulting and media to manufacturing. Mr. Abhijit has experienced all facets of internal audit, working for with many big corporate houses like SL, JSW, Wellspun, FDFC, and others has made him a familiar face among internal auditors. His inclusive approach, business acumen, enterprising nature, exceptional communication, and interpersonal skill has helped the firm spread its net far wide as well as diversify into other realms of financial space. Mr. Abhijit is an accomplished educator and has been visiting faculty at ICSI WRC, Mumbai. Besides, he has a natural bent towards performing arts, a poem by himself. Oh, wonderful. He has also appeared in TV serials. Oh, my God, on national television and web series. Oh, we have a personality, public personality. Great, rare combination. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Welcome to the Meta and Meta web webinar sessions. Uh, I'll request uh, Mr. Bala to say a few words on the topic and then Mr. Abhijit, your few words on the topic and then our presenter, Kinjal Mehta, she will present the topic. Okay. Kinjal Mehta is also Associate Senior Associate of Meta and Meta. She herself is a CA and CS. Welcome all. Over to Mr. Bala, and then after one minute, Mr. Abhijit. Thanks. And then Kinjal will start. You are on mute, Mr. Bala. Good morning to all of you. I have a great pleasure in welcoming you all for today's session. Today's session is going to be a little different than what we normally talk about it. Because when we talk about the company secretary, we always talk about, you know, Complaints related issue, secretary audit related issue, and the taking care of the statutory requirements, etc., and other things. Et the mood question comes actually in the mind can a company secretary be an accountant? The answer is positively yes, because most of the company secretaries, by and large, we are all coming from the commerce background. So we have actually knowledge of accountancy at the first time. And the second thing is there, even if you go through the various regulations currently in present, is company secretaries not doing audit. Yes, they've been doing audit in a different areas. In fact, one of the concurrent audit is being done by the company secretaries. Portfolio managers audit is being done by the company secretaries. And the broker and sub-broker audit is being done by the company secretaries. And the LODR is specifically recognized one of the regulations, I think if I'm not mistaken, it is regulation 56 or something like that. Where is uh, company secretary he is actually authorized to issue a yeah, half yearly maintaining 100% asset coverage for the debt borrowed by the companies. That is also there. In addition to that, the direct tax code, when it was introduced, they have talked to who are actually an accountant. While naming who are the accountant, they named all the three professional 
that is chartered accountant, company secretary, as well as uh, cost accountant, all the three. That means even the company secretary was recognized as an accountant. In addition to that, as you are all aware, company secretary is actually permitted to appear in front of the various regulatory authorities, including income tax, trademark, competition act, customs, etc., and other things and all. In addition to that, company secretary is also recognized as a registered valuer under the specific register valuation rules 2017. And there are a lot of company secretaries who are actually working as a registered valuer. So really, really speaking, it is not company secretary can do, company secretary are already doing it. But only thing is what happened by and large, the tendency is, oh, company secretary means we are only related to uh, company side and the complaints are related, not other thing. That is the general thinking or feeling which is not happening, which is actually not true. Actually. And in fact, uh, when I was working in a company which was an unlisted public company, I was actually functioning as a company secretary and the head of internal audit. And once the company has become listed, that time I think, you know, we have gone on listing for many locations. That means not only in a, a nationwide trading uh, things, which has come much later, much before that, you know, we need to register with the regional stock exchanges. We need to register with the various places where I have the business. So this company had a registration of the stock exchanges with the Pune Stock Exchange, Bombay Stock Exchange, Madara Stock Exchange, Calcutta Stock Exchange, all those things, it was there. So as the company went to public, you know, the role was very difficult for me to perform in the internal audit. I wanted to quit as an internal audit, I want to be only a company secretary. But they said, okay, it is becoming too much, but still we want you to be an internal auditor only. So what you do, you engage the outside agencies, you actually monitor. That is what they have done actually. So even then I continued to be the head of internal auditor, but the only thing is I was taking a help from thing, but I used to isolate with the audit committee, draft the internal audit program, and monitor it regularly, follow, putting it, presentation, etc., and all those things, which I was actually doing it. So really, really speaking, it is not internal audit is something out of the purview of the company secretaries or something like that. Only thing is, when you talk about the audit, we have to recognize there are two different things. One is the statutory audit and the other audits. For statutory audits, yes, the company site recognizes statutory audit can only be done qualified chartered accountants. That is their domain area. So that is where the statutory auditors are only from the chartered accountant faculty, which other professionals cannot perform. Actually. That is the only thing. Barring that, rest of the audit, whether you talk about the operational audit, management audit, concurrent audit, portfolio management audit, or any specific assignment audit, etc., and other thing, and all, everything can be done either by the company secretary, even by the cost accountant, it has been actually recognized. In fact, I saw some time back, our institute themselves, they have taken up the issue with the income tax department. They have written a letter to Ministry of Corporate Affairs and the Finance Minister to recognize as a company secretary, as an accountant under the Income Tax Act as well also. I think Atul Mehta will be knowing it much better because he is there in the councils. So this is a thing. Because already people are appearing in front of the various authorities, representing the matter, doing the thing, even taking the income tax assessment matters, etc., and other things and all. So recognition has been actually sought. In the light of that, the company secretaries have got an excellent, excellent opportunity in Excel in both in employment as well as in practice to become an internal auditor, management auditor, etc., and other things and all. That is what all the topic about it. I think Kinjal is actually going to take us the various nitty-gritties relating to the accountancy as such, and what are the areas which are actually open to company secretaries particularly, so that we will get to know more on this. I think we also have the Abhijit with us, who is actually an internal auditor as a chartered accountant, I think he will also agree with our view that domain is only statutory auditor domain is actually only for the statutory audit. Other audit is open for the other professional as well. I think he will agree. I think I will pass on the mic to Mr. Abhijit to say a few words on this and later on Kinjal will take over the presentation. Over to Abhijit, please. Thank you very much, sir. And first of all, uh, 
thanks to Mehta and Mehta for uh, letting me in and join this webinar. And <laughs> I was not prepared to open the session as such. I was told to I would I would be there and I'll have to say something at the end. So I was expecting my the mic to be to come to me at the end. So <laughs> I'm not that much prepared. Anyway, but then uh, as Mr. Bala rightly said that the company secretaries can also do the internal audits. Let me tell you, when it comes to internal audit, the companies or the management, the top management, etc., everybody is looking at value addition. It's not about your degree. It's not about uh, what stream of uh, education that you have pursued. It's about the value addition. When you go to some you know, uh, engineering companies, you find the engineers doing some internal audits. There are, there are instances where we need some, you know, uh, uh, techno commercial audit of some expenses okay. to be done where the chartered accountants are not able to do it. So we take okay. help of engineers who can actually, uh, you know, uh, give us the idea that how these uh, expenses have been booked. Right. So it's not about the degree that you're holding. It's not about the profession and the stream of profession that, you're, that you are in. It's about the value add that you can do for a company. And being a company secretary, you already, as you, as Mr. Bala said, you people are already doing some uh, audits yourself, whether it comes to compliance, whether it comes to, uh, you know, uh, you know, factory laws or other things, you know, secretarial audit you people are doing. So you are already adding some value to the company, to the top management, you're already adding some value. So it's all about value add and it's about application of your education to add that value. Now, internal audit per se is not, not different from internal controls. Let me tell you, internal controls are very, very simple, very logical. Any person, any professional, you being a, a company secretary, you've already followed a stream of education. You are already focused. You already know how the, you know, uh, the uh, financial statements are made. You are aware of all these things. All you need to do is, you know, just you have to see it through a different lens. That's it. You add value, you can do internal audit. Let me tell you an example from practical point of view. I, I give an example. These days, like, you know, <clears throat> there was a, I will not take the name. There is a, there is a, a bank or, or an, an uh, insurance company rather. It was having a pan India presence, right? And it has a very, you know, a very strict internal control that, okay, all those things, uh, the insurance company was running the a bank also. So all the branches were instructed to deposit the money into the bank same day. Same insurance company, same bank. Say, for example, SDFC or ICICI Bank, ICI Pro or SBI. So SBI is having SBI insurance, SBI is having his bank also. So SBI is asked uh, his branches to deposit all those uh, premiums to their bank same day. All right. But what happens to the places where the SBI is not present or the ICICI bank is not present or SDFC is not present? What are they supposed to do? They were supposed to deposit the amount in some scheduled bank account, which the person was doing diligently. But nobody took care of what happened to that deposited money after a point of time. And when the interlocutor came into picture, the third party came into picture, and when they analyzed it, they realized that, okay, such huge amount of money is lying in those scheduled banks, which is unaccounted for. I mean, this is, it is not deployed for some, you know, earning money. So it is about being aware of the situation. It's about how you add value, how you apply your mind, how you apply your education to it. And company secretaries can very well do the internal audit they can very well add value to internal control and how to do it and how, uh, what are the steps and what are the things to be done. I think Kinjal has prepared something. So I now pass on to Kinjal and uh, ask her to formally, you know, start this presentation. Please Kinjal, take over. Yes, thank you. So I'll start by saying, uh, you know, just asking a question in terms of what exactly do we mean by audit? When we talk about audit, uh, it basically means checking and verifying that things are done as per set particular standards or any kind of objectives that are put in place. This may be statutory audit, 
or internal audit. So statutory or external audit or internal audit. Now, uh, when you're looking at statutory audit, you are seeing, oh, you know, the financial statements are uh, put across in a true and fair view that are according to the accounting standards and auditing standards. And uh, as per these uh, set standards that are in place, now, uh, the same thing applies to internal audit. Um, while the internal audit is not fixated on these financial reporting standards, but you see that there are many other standards that uh, a company follows and many kind of aims and objectives that a company has, which it wants to ensure that all the activities that are taking place in the organization are geared towards achieving those objectives. So when we are talking about internal audit, we are basically talking about checking and verifying that these kind of set standards and goals of the organizations are being met. This does not necessarily mean that you need to have, uh, you know, additional uh, expertise because uh, the, ex uh, the expertise that CS in itself already provides uh, is, all, is enough with, uh, to understand and uh, carry out these kind of audit procedures to ensure that and help the management uh, in, in ensuring that, you know, these kind of uh, standards and um, objectives of the companies are met. So uh, this, this presentation is, uh, you know, aimed towards actually broadening the, the horizon for a uh, uh, practicing company secretary in terms of the kind of services that it can offer, uh, a, a kind of separate vertical or the capacity it can create in its organization to provide these kind of services to uh, organizations. Now, uh, we have large organization listed companies um, and such that usually have these kind of functions already in place. But if we look at, you know, a medium sized organization or a growing organization uh, where, you know, considering it was earlier small and now they are growing, uh, they, they need help in terms of putting, putting in place systems, processes and uh, uh, to ensure that they can, you know, leverage these kind of systems in place to grow further. Because without it, it is not possible for the, the kind of growth to happen. So uh, uh, these are, you know, this is an additional service that a practicing company secretary can provide. Um, so let's look at um, uh, internal audit. So uh, when we're talking about internal audit, um, and audit as such, audit can be can take several shapes and forms. Uh, audit can be very very specific and almost as an investigation into a particular problem that the organization is facing, or any kind of uh, particular function that the organization that the management wants to you know probably uh, take a microscope and find out more about. Uh, any kind of uh, if if the organization is suspecting any kind of fraud in a particular area then they probably can go for an audit there um so so an audit can take several shapes and forms and like i said earlier it's basically just checking that you know uh things are working according to plan and according to set standards in place now you give uh that kind of a function any sort of maybe internal audit management audit operational audit but when we talk about these different kinds of audits we are seeing that the lens or the perspective or the um the, the the perspective with which you know we are looking at the audit and we are approaching uh, this kind of audit is different and the reason for carrying out such uh, an audit is different so uh, we have operate uh, so we have internal audit which is you know the uh, the, the biggest uh, the universal set of you know uh, different kinds of audits internal audits as we know is for the management to understand more about the organization and to ensure that uh, the proper systems and controls are in place to ensure that the operations of the organizations are conducted in a proper appropriate manner 
uh then um, you have management audit which is a subset of internal audit which basically focuses on the decision making uh process of the management and if the management is capable enough and is uh you know um uh, taking decisions uh, that are geared towards achieving the objectives of the organization uh, and the subset is, of that is operational audit. So operational audit, you're basically focusing mainly on operations and uh, uh, how the operations of the, uh, the organizations are functioning. So we'll delve into that one by one later. So first we look at internal audit. So uh, we have thresholds for external audit to be undertaken, but at the same time we have uh, the Companies Act mandating internal audit also for several types of companies. So you have, as per Section 138, you have every listed company that is required to carry out such internal audit. Then you have uh, unlisted public company having paid up share capital of 50 crores or more, or a turnover of 200 crores or more, or any kind of loans and borrowings of uh, 100 crores or more along with you know any kind of deposits of 25 crores or more at any point during the preceding financial year uh, you also have uh, private companies who, that have, have a, a turnover of 200 crore or more during the preceding fin uh, financial year or any kind of outstanding loans or borrowings of 100 crores um, in the preceding financial year so uh, once these thresholds are met uh, then the the company is required to follow uh, section 1 uh, the requirement for internal audit within 6 months uh, from you know meeting these thresholds so uh, while Companies Act, you know, specifies that uh, external audit is uh, to be done by a chartered accountant, uh, it does not necessarily, um, uh, you know, pose the same requirement for an internal auditor. So uh, the 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 professionals that can carry carry out such internal audit are much more. So uh, an internal auditor can be a chartered accountant, a cost accountant, uh, and uh, or any such other professional, which includes uh, as company secretaries also, uh, that you know the board decides. So uh, it is it is given to the judgment of the board to decide. Um, you know who is appropriate to carry out the kind of internal audit that the company requires. Uh, the internal auditor can even be an, an employee of the company or it can be an external, uh, uh, you know, professional too. So many companies have an internal audit department only where some of these are majorly larger companies um, where, you know, they have a continuous function of internal audit going on throughout the year. It is uh, very important to give the internal auditor the authority to investigate and have access to uh, all kinds of organizational activities in order for him to perform his job and, uh, you know, provide the deliverables required uh, as per the engagement letter. So uh, I will just run through um, the kind of scope that is included in the internal audit work. So we get an idea of, you know, that these kind of, a, uh, this is basically the work that is done uh, when one carries out internal audit. Um, and the, the different um, areas that an internal audit looks into. Uh, so first we look at, a review of internal control systems and procedures. Uh, now, this is the most, most important part of internal audit. Uh, this involves uh, seeing and assessing whether the designs uh, and operation and uh, of the control is appropriate uh, and whether if it, if, is it effective in order to avoid any kind of risks um in the organization 
so this essentially means that you know um so for example if if we are looking at say even um fin financial reporting for example um you know and, and the data that is probably being prepared by someone at a factory uh, that is uh, you know uh, sent across to the fna department of the finance and accounts team of a particular organization a control uh, as um, basic as a maker checker control uh, whether it is in place whether you know this kind of a control is appropriate for uh, this kind of uh, for, for this kind of reporting this kind of process that needs to happen and is this con uh, control operating uh, effectively uh, now the, the auditor looks at minimizing this kind of audit risk so now um, as a charter accountant i'll tell you that there are you know three kinds of uh, risks you have inherent risk in any kind of audit um, so inherent risk is basically you know your human errors uh, and, and kind of uh, so, so this is basically it is going to be inherent in all the controls that you that you will probably put in place you can only minimize this kind of risk okay. then you have control risk control risk is basically seeing that you know all controls are in place to ensure any wrongdoings aren't happening and then detection risk is basically you know even if you have control in place are the controls being able to detect the the kind of errors that can probably happen uh, while the activities are being performed so uh, when we are looking at audit procedures that we are probably designing to check the internal control system these are the things these are the audit risks that we want to minimize uh, we want to see that the controls are actually inbuilt into the system there is no you know additional resources required to check uh to you know maintain the cost effectiveness um we also need to consider you know the limitations of internal control that you know like i said call, there are putting in place such kind of internal controls requires cost which is an additional you know burden on the organization human errors are you know are always going to happen if any kind of management collusion that happens uh, then you know the controls can be overridden by the management and any kind of abuse of power then these controls fail so you know these controls have limitations which you know must be taken into taken into consideration while planning um, you know the audit and the audit procedures uh and we want to one ensure thing, that one thing, one thing here when you are talking about the internal control and internal control procedure even statutorily also the statutory auditor whenever he is doing an audit in his core report he is supposed to make a specific comment the company has got a necessary internal control procedure put in place to the reference to the volume and organization, the size of the industry, that he has to definitely to put it actually. So what the statutory auditor does normally, whenever he comes before he discuss the assignment, he actually try to find out what is the internal control system is actually in place, whether the company has got the internal auditor there, whether it's the external internal auditor, internal audit auditor, whatever it is, he would like to have a discussion with the internal auditor to understand what are the internal audit has been done throughout the year? What is the scope? What you are explaining the job which is done? What are the areas where the control in the internal auditor's opinion is actually lacking, improving in place, etc. and other things and all, he gets an idea. So after getting an idea, he gets the feeling whether he is comfortable or not comfortable and it helps him to actually design his statutory audit. The, again, you know what happened, the number of uh, time, the number of areas, where he has to concentrate, etc., and all things helps actually with the help of the internal auditor. Normally, that is the procedure in many of the companies. The strategy auditor start before his audit and decide the scope. He agrees with it. From that perspective, the internal control and the internal auditor and the external auditor job it are both are complementary to each other. And the strategy auditor relies upon mostly the internal audit report to ascertain this aspect. Yeah. Right. Uh, so definitely. So I've covered this later in the presentation. So okay. we're looking at, uh, you know, how the internal control system actually aids the external auditor because external auditor also has to check the, the control internal control systems in place. 
so if you know this work is already being done by the internal auditor he basically takes help of uh, the internal auditor in order to carry out uh, his uh, statutory audit now when we're looking at you know these kind of internal control systems and procedures and checking that these if these are in place or no there are lots of uh, audit procedures that are uh, you know taken into consideration i will so considering that i'm just giving a brief overview of the the kind of audits that we can go about if need be in another uh, webinar we can probably delve into the kind of audit procedures that we can uh, you know undertake under you know these kind of uh, audits but here i'll just give a brief idea in terms of how you know we are checking these kind of things so there are two ways usually how you know these things are checked one uh, is basically understanding uh, the systems and controls that, that are already in place for the company this can be this is usually done in the form of a walk through uh, of the uh, processes that are in place which are documented where you know we understand you know the risks that are there in a particular process process um, and how the company is ensuring that they are mitigating such kind of risks uh, be it uh, you know detection risk of any error or if there is uh, if there are controls appropriate controls in place to ensure that errors do not take place um and so once we understand these processes and walk through a one process uh we identify the controls and check if these controls are in place and are working appropriately throughout the audit period so when we want to test these controls we do a test of control post procedure where on sample basis we you know take uh, certain um, uh, transactions if it you know if it's we're looking at financial uh, data or any kind of uh, you know uh, sample products if we are looking at you know more kind of a more operational audit uh and testing that you know these are as per the required standards that are in place and as per required requirements of the company so these are the two two procedures that we uh, you know undertake in order to uh, check that the internal control systems and procedures are in place and are fun functioning appropriately now the second thing uh, the internal auditor looks at is the uh, custodianship and safeguarding of assets um now we uh, many companies have lots of assets uh, it is very important for the company to to have these properly accounted for and safeguarded so when we are talking about this we are looking at verifying the physical existence of the assets where the you know if the company company is claiming that if it has these many assets do they actually have these kind of assets or no uh, or is the management under a false impression or is there any pilferage that has already taken place which the management is unaware of um uh, then you have uh, segregation of duties in uh, this is a control basically where you know the same person who is purchasing the asset is not uh, you know in control of uh, paying the uh, uh, dispersing the um, uh, the payment for the asset and is the is not the same person who is uh, physically safeguarding the assets because then you know the chances of theft and things like that are more so So to ensure that such kind of segregation of duties are in place, um, then we want to ensure that all assets are accounted for fully. The asset register is maintained properly. Uh, the computation, the purchase orders, everything is in place. Uh, all the records of the assets are in place. Um, then you want to see that the, uh, the the assets are properly safeguarded. If proper insurances are in place. uh fire safety is in place uh, you know and uh, ensure any kind of uh theft and all does not occur and uh, then you know the the auditor also looks into how the company accounts for its uh intangible assets be it softwares uh be it its ipr be it how how they are valuing these assets how you know uh the, the controls that are in place for these kind of intangible assets for the company i would like to share something here yeah. when you are talking about the safeguarding of the assets what has happened i actually when i was a internal auditor i was actually interested in carrying out the physical verification of the 
assets at the various places, etc. One of the things which I came across in that uh, company at that particular time, company had actually acquired a lot of residential flats, residential premises, because the company used to company use operating in multi locations and the company used to transfer the people from one place to the other places, etc. So they have acquired residential flats in many places. And one of the places where the residential flats were acquired, it was actually appeared in the bulk, something around 20 flats or something like that. Now, I was not only interested in physically these are all there, I was actually interested in verifying whether the company has got a title deeds, proper title deeds of these premises which are acquired by the company. When I run the check, I have a great surprise to notice Say 20 flats acquired by this company at Pune, none of the flats had the title deeds in the company's name at all. You'll be surprised to know how it has actually happened. Because I do not know, because some of the old people, they will be aware. When the industrial development and other things take place, a lot of state organizations, they actually came forward with many schemes. One of the things which came with the, the state government, they have actually allotted the leasehold land for about 100 years for the industrial people to build their residential houses. And they have actually said, we will actually transfer this leasehold land to them. And they can actually develop the land, they can build the premises. That is what they have done. So in the process, they have identified those times, the HDFC developers company. So that land was actually transferred to the HDFC developers in order to develop the land in the interest of the company who has opted for it. That is how we got it. But really speaking, the state, state department has actually transferred the land for developing to the SDFT developer with undertaking. When the premises are ready, there'll be a tri-party agreement has to be entered by the state government and the SDFT and the company in order to get the title transferred to the company. Unfortunately, after the development has taken place, everything has been registered. Even the company was able to get, you know, the water bills and the property tax and the electricity, etc. in their name. But the tri-party agreement, which is supposed to have been executed, the land virtually is actually transferred the name of the company that was actually absent. Almost about 20, 25 years, this was the case. I just discovered it. When I told them, then they are really surprised and ultimately it has taken almost about two and a half years because by the time SDFC developers closed down. And ultimately, SDFC Finance Corporation as uh, IT, uh, ITC Housing Finance Corporation has been authorized to execute the thing. And after almost two years, running to pillar to post, etc., and other thing and all, we executed. Once you are done, then what happened? It opened up a lot of areas in many companies in Pune. Many companies also have not had the title date. They had done the same mistakes. And many people came to me, how did you do it? What is the procedure? Please guide us and other thing and all. After that, a lot of companies have done. And another thing in this process, what has happened was, I must also share with you here, what is the stamp duty payable at the transfer? Because the question is, if had it the tripartite agreement would have been executed 20 years back, stamp duty is something different. But today, after 20 years, the stamp duty was more. So the superintendent of the stamp actually wanted to collect the stamp duty and today's one. Well. Again, we had to make an application, we went, and ultimately, it was actually proved to their satisfaction that although it is technically not transferred the property to the company's name, virtually they have been occupying, they are actually the owner for the last 20 years. Yes, there's a lapse on our part. So ultimately, the stamp duty was actually levied only 20 years back, what was required to be levied, but they have charged some amount of the penalty for the not executing the tripartite agreement 20 years. That has also happened in these cases. So it is not only important in verifying the assets, it is also important to verify, especially the title deeds of the assets wherever the company has created. We got a later set when you want to dispose, when you want to sell up, when you want to transfer, you will have a greater amount of the problem. That particular time, it will take a hell of a lot of time and energy for you. That I just wanted to share with the participants. I, yeah. just, I just want to add one more, this little thing that, you know, this, the whole topic that we are, uh, you know, discussing here, yeah. this could be the uh, best area where a company secretary PCS can 
you know, uh, transform his practice into internal audits where verifying the assets is this physical verification is a very low hanging fruit. Anybody can do it. You all you need to do is just go and pitch yourself that, okay, I'm present there. I can count your assets. I can uh, prepare your FAR and give it to your statutory auditors. I'm telling you, if you are actually serious about internal audits and practicing into internal audits, this could be your uh, gateway to enter this uh, stream. So every company is doing it. FAR is to be completed by every company. And let me tell you, statutory auditors are having their plate full. They do not uh, have the bandwidth to complete these physical audits themselves. So they look for people who can actually do it and you do not need to be, I mean, you need not be a chartered accountant to count the assets, I'm telling you. So this could be a very good area where you can just enter into uh, the field of internal audits. That's it. Right, definitely, definitely. <clears throat> so, uh, Sanjay, uh, When uh, another point for scope would be review of compliance policies, plans, procedures, and regulations. Now, every company has its own policies and plans and procedures in place. Um, uh, the, the, as a part of internal audit, we want to ensure that in all its operations, these po policies and plans and procedures are followed. For example, um, if there is any kind of uh, change that is probably happening in the organization, then even in executing such changes, uh, the, the main uh, procedures and policies of the company are being followed. For example, if you know any kind of acquisition takes place, then are the same HR policies that are being followed? Are the same systems and processes being employed in, in this new acquisition that has probably taken place? Uh, or any, any other such changes that, that happens in an organization, we want to ensure that, you know, even after such changes uh, have taken place, the, say, the, the policies of the, of the organizations are executed in the same manner. And then we want to, you know, check the results and review and analyze whether these kind of policies and systems and procedures that, that are in place, are they adequate? to allow the company to uh, reach the kind of potential it has and to reach the goals that it has set for itself. Um, or, you know, are there any kind of weaknesses or any kind of, um, you know, specific gaps that are identified where, you know, any kind of remedial action that can be taken, whether the policy probably needs to change or, you know, the way the, the operations are being carried out need to possibly change. Then uh, we look at review and relevance and reliability of information. Now this, we are talking about reports that are, uh, you know, sent to uh, the management. Uh, we want to see that the information systems that are in place uh, are reliable and uh, accurate and uh, they are uh, consistent. Uh, so, you know, these can be MIS management information system or any kind of, you know, reports uh, that can possibly range from a factory report in terms of the production done during the day uh, to possibly, uh, you know, an MIS report or a flashcard report that probably goes to the board uh, or the audit committee in their, you know, regular meetings that happen. Now, uh, we want to ensure that these kind of reports that go up to the management that are that based on which you know uh, important decisions are being taken in the organization we want to ensure that such information goes in a timely in a timely manner and it is most accurate so uh, an internal auditor basically can trace back uh, the process through which such reports are being generated and see and understand the process and ensure that uh, checks are in place to ensure the integrity of such report, to ensure that these reports are reliable and uh, they go, go up to the management in a timely manner so they're useful and uh, 
uh, for the decision making in the organization. Uh, one thing that also needs to be taken into consideration is the cost, because uh, the more reports and the more information that you know we we plan to generate, that involves a lot of costs. So we want to you know delve into the cost benefit analysis also of uh, several kinds of um, reports and information that is probably going up to the management. Uh, the internal auditor actually can also look into the organizational structure and the th the way things are, uh, the activities and functions in the organizations are structured, whether, you know, two different functions can probably work together to, to uh, provide synergy and save cost or, you know, whether probably a spin-off is required or a or a you know segregation of function is required. Uh, this considering you know an internal auditor will be looking at various processes and various operations of the organization. An internal auditor is in a good uh, place to understand whether uh, and comment on the organizational structure of the operations that are taking in taking a, a place in the organization. So he just can review, you know, various activities, whether, you know, the structuring of the organization is efficient uh, in order to meet the goals of the organization. We want to also ensure that it, it is economical, you know, there are not, there's no double uh, work being, uh, be, being done, not, not additional resources, unnecessary additional resources being employed. Um, you know, one uh, department is not, you know, having an undue dominance, dominance or influence on another department. We will also want to ensure that, you know, staff has only one um, uh, report manager uh, there are no you know two reporting managers where there can be confusion uh, you know the span of control of management is uh, properly mapped uh, there is uh, one unity of command one person you know um, uh, that a person is reporting to uh, and any kind of managerial development that can possibly take place to uh, to allow for you know a streamlined lean organizational structure where activities can flow smoothly and uh, you know ensure that it is done in a most e efficient manner then we look at a uh, review of you know utilization of resources uh, now when we talk about utilization of resources uh, we are looking at basically efficiency of the organization um, and uh, as per, you know, required standards, standards that are in place. So uh, first thing we want to ensure that any kind of, uh, so considering, you know, internal audit has a very, very broad scope. Um, the kind of uh, things that I'm talking about are also very broad in scope and general in nature. Uh, these the basically these kind of principles th these principles can then be applied into a more focused area that you know an internal audit is looking into so for example we are looking at operate uh, appropriate operating standards now this can be for a factory you know any kind of uh, standards that uh, the manager of the factory has put in place or you know we can be also looking at uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, 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 finance and accounts department, any kind of, you know, uh, 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 timelines that are in place or any kind of maker checker that is in place, any kind of formats of reports that are in, that are in place. These, these basically standards, we want to ensure that appropriate operating standards are in place. Uh, and are economical and practical and efficient uh, as per the resources available by, for the company. Uh, then we want to also ensure that these kind of standards are expressed properly, uh, you know, uh, and, and they are precise and detailed, um, you know, so that uh, specific work can be allocated um, to ensure that, you know, these kind of uh, standards standards are being met um, and appropriate responsibilities can be put in uh, can be you know given to uh, personnel to ensure that you know these kind of uh, standards are uh, being met 
uh, we also want to review how these operating standards are put in place, whether they are appropriate, whether, you know, possibly a, a, a factory can be operating at a higher capacity than it is, you know, right now, according to the standards that are in place. Maybe, you know, uh, 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 the factory is possibly, you know, overworking itself and the, the operating standards probably need to be reduced. Uh, so we want to ensure that, you know, uh, that these uh, operating standards are uh, put in place in the most practical, achievable manner. Then we then we go and identify any kind of divergences that are taking place, whatever standards are there and what is actually being what what is actually happening in the organization. Then we go investigate, you know, that why such divergences are taking place, any kind of problems or issues that are uh, being faced by employees, uh, whether these need to be taken into consideration while setting these kind of operating standards or such kind of divergences, divergences can be worked upon. Uh, then th this allows us to identify areas of underutilization of, uh, of any kind of organization, which I'm sure the management would be happy to hear about and improve upon. You're right, actually, then, Kinjal, when you're talking about this underutilization aspect. When I was an internal auditor, we had about five manufacturing units. In two of the manufacturing units, what has been happening was the overtime payment, which was actually happening beyond, you know, even under the factory site also, overtime is permitted only up to the certain limit. But only thing is, even if you exceed the limit, what happens is the labor inspector does not uh, pay that much attention because it is in the interest of the workers who is receiving the money. They don't normally initiate any action. But what has happened, out of these five manufacturing units, two of the manufacturing units, the concept of overtime has been actually misutilized. That means, you know, deliberately not getting the particular job done in the routine shirt, which would have otherwise been done, but deliberately reserving a thing, creating the emergency sort of the situation and allowing certain people to gain undue advantage of overtime. Because when I conduct that audit, I could identify because repeatedly there are certain identified people they were consecutively, month after month, they were getting the higher amount of the overtime. This has come out and ultimately when we found out deliberately there were certain people who were involved, etc., which has actually happened when we have taken the necessary steps. So these sort of the things also can be plugged in when it comes to, you know, the manufacturing organization, etc. And not only that, similarly, we also done with the help of the qualified expert in the marketing and the sales field. What happens our since being a metallurgical company, we had a two different men. One is actually a sales department, only the marketing department. Marketing department is, you know, they do the research, etc., develop the customer, hand over to the sales people. Then sales takes on the way. But, you know, when we done with the help of the expertise, then we found out actually, there is actually a misfit of the people. The people who are exceedingly, who can do better in sales, they were placed in marketing. The people who are exceedingly good in doing the marketing function, they are placed in sale. Those aspects also came out. Subsequently, company has reshuffled and done the things, etc., and other things and all. In addition to that, there were certain operations which were actually repeatedly done, so which could have been actually combined. Certain operation has been done without doing the each other, you know, that can be eliminated. So there are a lot of things which actually came out when you walk towards the improving the efficiency in the factory level at the other places which we have done actually. Of course, there are certain technical related aspects, etc. I love to take a help of the, you know, metallurgical people and engineering people, etc. I could not have done it myself, but it's all the fact which actually came out. Yeah. Right. Yes. So th this underutilization of resources is extremely common in all organizations and the management is proactively trying to understand the areas where this is happening and improve upon that. So this is a very good tool by which uh, the management goes about doing this. And this is the kind of value addition that, uh, you know, a CS in an internal audit role uh, brings to the management. In fact, uh, the CS firm can specifically undertake what you call a labor audit for the manufacturing organization, apart from compliances, Relating to the efficiency, operational efficiency, repetitive operation, etc., and other thing and all, they can definitely bring 
a value addition to the management in these terms. That is one of the good area actually when it comes to the audit. Yeah. Right. Now uh, we look at uh, the internal audit as a function to review uh, the accomplishment of goals and objectives. Now this is basically uh, a tool uh, where uh, the management or the company can assess whether the goals of the organizations and objectives that have been set are being met by the organization or no. Uh, so in the, the role that an internal auditor can possibly play in this is that uh, we want to see that these uh, goals and objectives of the organizations that are put in place are clearly stated um, or no, the vision mission statement is clear to the entire organization or no. Does everyone know that uh, the direction in which everyone needs to be moving, the kind of um, the culture, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, direction that is required to each and every person in the organization must be clearly, clearly stated. The values that the organization stands for and uh, the direction in which it wants to move. Um, and these must be practical and attainable. Otherwise, you know, there is no meaning uh, in setting such goals. Uh, these goals must be quantifiable. So when you have broader goals that are in place, that are ambigu ambiguous, then it is very difficult for um, if everyone else in the organization to understand what it exactly means, what exactly they need to do in order to achieve those kind of goals. So when we are talking about even the larger goals of the organization, they must be quantifiable in nature. Uh, this this can be monetary. It can be, you know, we want to achieve this kind of revenue growth, 20% uh, revenue growth next year, or it can be uh, we want to, um, uh, you know, enter this particular market in this year. So, uh, but it must be quantifiable in nature to allow for other people, other organizations, uh, sorry, other functions in the organization to set their own goals in order to allow for the organization to achieve its larger goal. Uh, so the internal auditor must ensure that these uh, steps, these checks are in place. Uh, we also want to ensure that a regular budgeting process uh, is in place that allows for um, you know the the management to understand and plan regularly for uh, its future and understand problem areas that the the organization is facing now we move on to internal audit report so this is basically the deliverable that the auditor uh, as an auditor we would be providing to the um, to the management uh, now, these can be two types. One, you know, is an internal audit report where um, it is for a particular period and it is for or it can be for a particular purpose that the internal auditor has been appointed. So um, this internal auditor audit report is um, geared towards covering those aspects um, of the particular uh, audit. Whereas on this, on the on the other hand, uh, there are a lot of companies that have several kinds of audits uh, happening simultaneously. Um, like you have an operational audit happening, a management audit or happening. Both of them, you know, they can be happening at the same time. It is not uncommon, uh, or any kind of special investigation that is being that is happening. So on a periodical basis, usually on a uh, in a in in, in a quarter. One consolidated report goes to the uh, to the audit committee or the board committee, whatever the board, whatever the company has, um, to to that gives a summary of all such audit reports uh, that the organization has undertaken. Now we can uh, look into the the uh, the format or the. Uh, the content of the audit report. Um, so the audit report as such, so it is not as stringent as the statutory audit report. Uh, this can, uh, there is room for, you know, uh, uh, 
providing for the preference as per the preferences of the management. Uh, so designing the audit report in a manner that is uh, as per requirement of the board or the audit committee or uh, however the management, you, you know, uh, the, or any kind of specific assignment or task that is being given to the auditor. So this there is room for a lot of uh, flexibility and changes uh, when it comes to a, an internal audit report, depending on uh, the purpose of the audit that is being undertaken. So, uh, but in general, you will have an over, overview of the objectives of the audit, then the scope of the audit, um, and the approach that is being taken, the audit procedures that have been undertaken. Um, uh, then you have, if if you know internal audit um, standards are that are issued by ICA, I have been followed. Then the, uh, one must mention that you know the audit has been uh, undertaken as per the standards of, uh, of internal audit uh, issued by ICA. I, uh, there is a summary of key observations um, that uh, were, you know, observed during the audit and uh, that fall under the scope of the assignment. Uh, uh, an additional factor that, you know, is not there uh, in a statutory audit but is included in the internal audit is the corrective actions um that you know uh, the internal auditor has suggested to the management and the management has agreed for uh, that it will undertake such corrective um actions um so the internal audit report contains um these uh, the list of corrective actions uh, the timeline by which you know these correct the corrective actions must will be undertaken and uh, who in the management will be responsible to ensure that you know uh, these corrective actions uh, are uh, undertaken in a timely manner any kind of assurance that uh, the the auditor is providing um, to the the audit committee or the board committee or you know the management in general uh, we also look at the basis of uh, the internal audit report. So basis, the, uh, meaning the audit procedures that are conducted and any kind of analysis and uh, audit evidence that is gathered uh, the the, and based on which the conclusion is reached. Um, then, the, the, like I said, the content and format of the uh, audit report is based on the professional judgment of the auditor and uh, it can be influenced by the preferences of the management. Um, also, documentation wise, it is required that, you know, the draft uh, audit report is uh, maintained and any kind of cross references for any kind of specific observations are maintained, uh, any kind of action plans. Uh, that are signed between management and the auditor. Uh, these kind of documents are maintained by the auditor for the company. One uh, important aspect of internal audit is the follow up, um, which is uh, basically, uh, you know, if any corrective actions that are suggested by the auditor, which the management has agreed that it will work towards. Then it is it is uh, the responsibility of the internal auditor to ensure that such observations are closed and such you know uh, commitments are uh, closed in a timely manner uh, by the management. If this is not done, then you know uh, they must shed light um, to the audit committee or the board that you know uh, that uh, these. Um, kind of observations were uh, highlighted by us, but you know, no action has been taken uh, on them. Um, they, this can be done in a formal manner, informal manner. You should, it's better if it's done in a formal manner. Uh, it is can be also done in the action taken report, uh, where um, you, know, you have a list of actions that need to be taken, uh, need to be taken, and you know whether by what time uh, it must be uh, completed and whether the status of these these uh, actions uh, whether they have been done not done what is happening there's one more aspect that has been added to these things now this is the risk based audit is also there as you know <clears throat> while highlighting the uh, observations the auditor may you know want the management to pay attention to certain areas on priority to others 
So yeah. based on that, uh, they they classify these observation into high risk area or low risk area or moderate risk area, and then they highlight it that way only. And the action taken are also followed up in that manner itself. And also the materiality, you know, in okay. in multinational. I'll just share one minute. In multinational company like what we work, so it is not necessary that the internal auditor should be from an internal audit in house in that subsidiary in India or from an Indian internal auditor. We have like say global internal audit department, and they do management audit every year, and the reports are seen. And there, like nowadays, we are covered more by the portals. and the portal is uploaded with these reports even if we do one year in internal audit report it is uploaded and based on like what abhijit said based on the the materiality and the risk and how it is going to affect the overall materiality in signing the financial reports at the level of you know see each subsidiary globally has also a materiality if i exceed that materiality then it will be pointed out to the to the to the level of board and that also is uh, linked up so in your report i wanted to cover that there are two types of report one is a typical internal audit report raised by an internal auditor for indian uh, regulation updation the other is the audit report from a management perspective which the management sees based on their operational ability the compliance will be seen but it is more there with respect to like what is a if we have a risk assessment procedure are they following have they done it how many times there has been problem and if that would have done what would have been the risk what is the materiality has there been training done in order to see that this repeat is not done you know so these normally what we cover in the internal audit rather than the complaints like typically we do whether this has been filed in time or not so that is that is second as sacrosanct what we really do is more efficiency and effective appropriately in place so that i just thought i'll just share from a global perspective you are right actually mari arjun in fact when i was doing the internal audit i have been given a mandate mandate what are the observation which are actually coming out of it lacking etc i have to actually rate it the rating you know criteria has been actually fixed by the audit committee because what are the things which will be looked into irrespective of materiality one of the factor was actually related to the human relations activities anything concerned with the labor health safety etc that will be a higher risk area according to the management because they wanted to address that arising out of that it actually thrown out in one of the time many people were not actually aware of the safety health management policy of the company what is the things when it is came the audit company took a review immediately let us put you know this sort of a small print out spelling out the safety health policy of the company what is the things etc distribute to everybody on a weekly basis contact a sort of the communication across department by department counseling and make and bring the importance of this etc and other thing and all and not only that the suggestion has been invited from the people especially in the factories they have been told in a monthly twice they have to take the round of the factory around whatever they notice from the safety point of view health point of view hazardous point of view they have to bring and report give a things to the management so that management will take action this actually came out similar things has come as a quality policy similarly the same thing they have done for our quality policy this quality policy has been actually told all the people who are working in the production department because we don't have the separate quality department in our company because the quality is to be checked upon the production whether it is according to the specification it has been manufactured no separate quality etc nothing each stage they are supposed to check so ultimately they have to certify themselves yes it is according to the specification so again that was another leaflet was actually printed and it was circulated to all the people every day morning you have to see what is our quality what we are supposed to do that is what the awareness you know which has been brought these are all certain thing what you talk about the value addition suggestion minor things but it has got a great impact actually in the organizations
Abhijit, there is one question has come for you actually, which you will be able to answer, I think. Whether the signing of the internal audit report is mandatory, what is the legal provision in this regard? I have seen in many companies that internal audit report is not signed. Abhijit? Yeah, I'm there, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. See, the signing part, like, it depends on the engagement letter. See, how the internal auditor has been engaged and what is the scope of his uh, audit and where this audit report is going to be used. So there is no uh, statutory requirement as such for many of the assignments that we handle. But at the same time, when the reports are to be presented to the you know committee or the board members and it is to be you know included in the uh, what you call the minutes of the meeting, then the reports are obviously signed and they are delivered to the management. Yeah, in fact, uh, practically when I was handling the internal audit, we had to design our own format. What are the documents? What is the things evident? What is the materiality which has actually come? What is the management comment? What is ultimately the thing? The remarks yes. are done rating. Format, and it format is, is always so format is always and, uh, and after that there is a summarized the report is actually prepared. It is duly signed, it is given to me as uh, when I was doing as an employee. But when we actually given to the third party. Who was doing the thing? They always used to issue a signed report on their letterhead along with the annexure. That is just the practice which used to be followed actually. I think internal audit report, whenever we are giving, because normally what happens is the internal audit terms and uh, scope, etc., and other thing and all, everything is actually formulated. A formal appointment letter is issued to the internal auditor. So, in turn, when he has actually finished the report, he has to actually give a proper report duly signed, in my opinion, I think so. Yes, yes, it is hundred percent need to be from what I at least the in the internal audit pertaining from a management internal internal definitely we make it to say that who has written who has reviewed and who has approved if there are internal audit three people somebody who went and audited and wrote the report and then it is reviewed by one superior. And the head of internal audit who reports to the board or to the CEO also has to see and say that he has seen it. And so there it is no question of not having. And in many boards, even in India, since it goes to audit committee, any internal audited report unsigned, they will throw off because mm -hmm. there is no accountability or from their perspective, they have not given their clear this thing. You know, if there is no signature, there are some people who just throw it saying that this is not valid. Absolutely this is my right. personal view absolutely and personal are, experience. Absolutely, you are right. Without any signature, it doesn't have any validity according to me. And one more question has come actually. Can you please suggest three or four things to ensure independence of the internal audit function in many mid mid size companies? Uh, internal audit is generally considered as a fault finding department and hence is housed under the finance function which compromise the quality of the audit and also results into conflict of the interest. First and foremost thing, internal audit should not report to the finance department. That is the first and foremost thing. Because when you talk about the internal audit, internal audit is an independent uh, function. Wherever the audit committee is there, the internal auditor will report to the audit committee. Whenever the audit committee is not there, then naturally it escalates to the board to them. Because there is no way it should actually report to the finance department or something like that. If it is any internal audit done relating to the finance department, the finance department the chief executive, chief financial officer, etc., can only give his comments on the observations, etc., and all. That is the only limited thing. No way he can actually come under the control. I, this is not the right practice according to me. Abhijit, you can add. Sorry, I uh, missed it. No, they are all, yeah, they are asking. Uh, in some of the companies, you know, it looked upon for finding company, it is actually with a finance yes. function. So there's a conflict <laughs> of interest. Yeah. No, no. So the internal audit has gone far beyond, you know, uh, finding the fault. Let me tell you, 
as we have uh, progressed as a as company also have progressed and all the you know the technology has progressed and uh, businesses per se have progressed so it is an age old concept where people used to uh, you know think auditors to be the only fault finding you know uh, person now it has gone much beyond that and let me tell you it is a it is a part and parcel of uh, top management and it has become a catalyst to actually uh, propel the business of i mean the propel further the business of companies it is not about fault finding it is about you know revenue leakages or proper functioning of your own inbuilt uh, controls like you know see internal audit is as i told you earlier it is all about uh, value add how you add value so it's not about if i find if i keep finding fault among yourself you, you, it will not be adding any value but if i tell you that okay this thing you are doing it in a uh, lesser efficient manner and if you do it this way it will be more efficient then it is not about fault finding it is about your improving your own actions so internal audit is now as i told you as i gave you the example practical example of that insurance company there was no fault finding about anybody the the uh, people were doing it diligently everybody was uh, you know honest honestly the premium was collected honestly the premium was deposited into the bank but the huge amount of fund was lying idle so for the company it was detrimental that such a huge amount of fund is lying idle for such a long time so it's all about you know how you perceive it it's not about fault finding anymore let me tell you even the um, the oddities are taking it positively yes in the same at the same time we are all humans let me tell you there are there are fraud investigations going on investigation audits are also going on unfortunately they also fall under the internal audit purview right so those who wish to deviate the uh, process those who wish to make some other money some uh, money in some other way they might find it difficult to cope up with the internal auditors otherwise internal audit for an organization is a positive thing even for the oddities it is a positive thing we focus more on processes improvement of processes how to you know uh, prevent revenue leakages let me tell you there was a bengali boss i had so uh, he used to say uh, in hindi he used to say chowanni gir gaya chowanni gir gaya uska gam nahi hai than ka awaaz aana chahiye so he was saying that even if you lose money if there are processes which uh, in which we you, we lose money that is that can happen it's a mistake but your process should be set that you come to know as in when it happens it's not about losing uh, losing something it's about knowing that you have lost it here the penny is lost where it is lost so internal controls internal audits are are a tool to optimize your own uh, resources and as we discussed in the earlier uh, uh, slides it's uh, the underutilization of resources it is first of all find, found out by the internal auditor himself it's not about fault finding it is about how efficiently more efficiently we can work it's about working together and add value for the company obviously some people who are uh, practicing some other you know malpractice they are indulged into malpractice or they want to uh, avoid systems due for their own benefit they might find it difficult to cope up with internal auditors otherwise internal audit is taken to be very positive i am telling you it is not person centric now these days it is more on system centric it's we are focusing more on processes and as the company grows it it pays more attention to the systems not on people people may come and go people are switching uh, jobs you know everybody is switching jobs just like anything but the system are there systems are there if the system is there then the new person will come and he follow the system so as an auditor you have to see and uh, see that the system is in uh, in place and it is working so controls are there and they are working no matter who the person is so it's not about fault finding in a person it's about finding the best way to do it whether internal audit covers secretarial department the answer is obviously yes internal audit report should be addressed to the board or the audit committee that we discuss wherever the audit committee is there it should be audit committee if the audit committee is not there then it should be the board if the internal audit is required to be put before the board or the audit committee is sufficient 
No, if it is audit committee is there, internal audit has to be put to the audit committee. That's all. Once the audit committee reviews and other thing and all, it is taken uh, note of the board subsequently. That's it. Yeah. Board only accepts. Yeah. The approved, disapproved does not arise. Board just accept the report that is put in, reviewed and approved by the audit committee. Correct. Yeah. Go ahead, Kijay. Thank you. Now let's look at operational audit, which is a subset of uh, internal audit. Uh, it is more, so the perspective is different, the focus is different. Uh, now we are focusing on the actual operations of the company, and we want to check the effectiveness, efficiency, and economy of these uh, operation, operations. So effectiveness, we are looking at are the objectives of the organization being met? Uh, is the are the profitability targets being met? Are the quality standards being met? Uh, now efficiency. When you when we are talking about efficiency, are we we are looking at is it done in the best possible manner with the lowest cost, best quality, um, you know, uh, uh, processes and uh, things are being performed and production is taking place in whatever capacity you know the audit is being taken place. And then we are looking at economy. Economy is basically you know the costs are low. Uh, we are focusing on reducing costs. Um, and containing cost, uh, but at the same time carrying out our uh, our operations in a in an effective manner. Uh, operations audit uh, requires a deep dive analysis into the actual operations uh, of the company. Uh, this this may not be done. Such deep dive may not be done uh, when we are looking at internal audit as a whole. But operational audit, you know, you are specifically looking at uh, the operations of the organization. Uh, now, uh, so why operational audit? So when as a CS, uh, we, we are, if we are pitching to our clients or potential clients, that why do they need operational audit? Um, you know, these are the points to uh, consider where, you know, you tell them that, you know, this is something that you require and uh, this is a service or this is, you know, uh, 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 um, a practice that needs to be undertaken by your organization uh, and we are offering this so the the aspects that you know one can pitch with is you know how uh, when you have the actual people who are in the operations of the, of the organizations are pretty out of touch with the bigger picture of the organization and the and how you know from a bird eye view the management looks at things because they are so busy in their uh, day to day operations of the organization that they do not even have the time to you know uh, look and analyze uh, as per the bigger pictures and goals of the organization and future plans of the organizations uh, then the managers you know they are more prone towards providing information about what they are doing rather than sitting and analyzing situations and uh, modeling any kind of scenarios and things like that then um, even though since they are involved in the processes their information can be very biased uh, you need some third party to look at it you know from a third party perspective and give you a better idea in terms of how operations are being conducted uh, now, also, if you're looking at just internal audit as a function in general, it does not uh, deep dive so much into the operations uh, of, of the organization. It does check, you know, if operations controls are in place. But if uh, the, the management has a certain questions about, you know, why these things are happening? Why is my profit so low? Uh, why is my quality not being met? Why are my customers not happy? Uh, you know things like any kind of questions that possibly the management wants to be answered about its operations uh, internal audit may not be you know conventional internal internal audit may not be able to answer uh, such uh, specialized operational audits must be undertaken to ensure that you know these kind of um, answers are being provided to the to, to the management um, other so and even internal audit reports or any kind of other audit reports they usually look at financial analysis um, of the entity uh, which does not actually provide a a clear picture about what actual operations 
are and what actual operational difficulties are and what uh, op operational you know uh, performances uh, are it, it is possible that you know a, a, a factory is uh, as per is generating uh, you know uh, products at the lowest cost, best quality, etc. But at the same time, you can see that you know uh, the the laborers aren't happy. There is a, a strike on you know on, on the uh, in in the horizon in the coming future and things like that, which may not be highlighted in a financial analysis if if you know if you're uh, taking conventional audit methods. Um, there Let are surveys. Let me give you one uh, practical example, which uh, we have done in the past also. All these, you know, um, online platform companies, like whatever it be, uh, you know, Mintra.com or some Flipkart or Amazon, they all conduct uh, uh, an audit that is called mystery audit, where they pose as a customer and then they look into what is actually happening in operations, how they're uh, complaints are being escalated, how the rejections are being met, what all uh, dissatisfaction a customer can actually have. So they do these, you know, mystery audits. This is another uh, area where your know, PCS can be, you know, uh, useful. I mean, I, I told you, as I told you earlier also, degree has got nothing to do with it. It's all about application. So this is also one of the audits which the bigger companies are conducting and you can yourself pitch for these kind of audits. We have been doing in the past, and this is what the operational audit is all about. The knowing the uh, operations, you know? Yeah, please. Not only that, you talked again also earlier also, the value addition. How do you bring the value addition? Question yeah. is, routinely, what are required to be checked from the perspective of the internal audit, what is going on, everything is okay, and other thing and all, that is one thing. In addition to that, what is useful to the management? Where the management, you know, very much interested and comfortable and convenient, that is another aspect. If I recall it, you will also know it because you also know between 2000 and 2010, the Institute of Chartered Accountants actually flooded with a n number of accounting standards. Accounting <laughs> standards were initially only some nine or ten, and suddenly over a period of over five years period, the accounting standards rose from number eight to nine to up to 35 or something like that. N number of accounting standard which has come, then they floated the discussion paper, they actually said inviting the comments and it will become operational in the, from the next year. That was the time when I was looking after the internal audit. The very first and foremost thing what I did is, because of course with the help of the external auditing firm who are actually assisting me, I gave one of the assignment to them, look here, you take these two accounting standards which are going to be effective from the next year or something like that. Just to run a check with our organization, whether our organization is actually ready to adopt and implement when the accounting standards comes into force in the next year or anything is lacking, anything is required to be done, what should be our preparedness? That is what it does actually happen. Many such issues, has happened and a lot of things were required to be done and borders to get involved and audit committee to get involved, all those things which has actually come. Really speaking, this is what the management is really, really looking forward. Where you can actually suggest, you know, the value addition, where you can bring your expertise, where yeah. you can add value to the companies, all those things can really, really help. This is one of the very good area for the practicing company secretaries to take into the practice in addition to what is normal secretarial audit and complaints related, etc. and other thing at all. As I said in the beginning, it is not that accounts is uh, the audit is uh, quite new to the company secretaries. Already, not many areas, the audit is already being done one way or other. And our recognition is also there in many places, and more will come actually. That's it. Yeah. Right. It's it's more about understanding the requirements of the client and pitching, uh, you know, that we are providing these kind of services that you need uh, and uh, which which can take forms in the form of, you know, any kind of questions or difficulties that the management is facing in managing the organization.
uh, also so one more last point is basically uh, the management also you know undertakes surveys and special investigations into certain areas and things but you know these are more ad hoc events that take place and they are useful but they are very expensive and they are more post post mortem analysis um, rather than allowing uh, whereas in, in an operational audit you are continuously monitoring these kind of, these operations and uh, checking for improvement uh, and you know any kind of signals for any kind of potential risks that could possibly occur in the operations of the organization now even operational audits can be of several types uh, it again uh, these these kind of internal audits are more tailor made and custom made for the requirements of the management and what um, questions of the management that needs to be answered what is the purpose of these kind of uh, audits so one can be functional audit uh, functional audit is basically you identify one function in the organization and uh, only that particular function is audited for example uh, you know the hr function of an organization uh, it is uh, the management thinks that it's not as effective and efficient as it should be then uh, it may carry out an audit for for the hr department only uh, and uh, so you know uh, as company secretaries we can uh, possibly uh, create expertise in you know specific functions of the organization or specific industries um, and uh, um, provide these kind of specialized audits for uh, several organizations but one drawback of this kind of audit is basically it is it is difficult for uh, the auditor to understand the uh, interrelated functions and synergies that take place when only one function of the organization is being audited when we look at organizational audit uh, basically here we are looking at how the organization is structured uh, how it is, how things are planned um, how effectively different functions if, if the organization interact with each other and how is the synergy of such interaction in the organization etc and then you have special assignments which you know like can be a spectrum of things uh, for example you know you uh, the, the management wants to find out in uh, what is the cause of an ineffective it system um, or uh, you know the management thinks that there's a possibility of fraud in a particular division uh, they want to reduce cost in a particular uh, product line a particular department uh, and things like that so th these kind of assignments can be varied and they can shape can take any shape size and form um, it is more about answering uh, the management and helping the management be proactive in understanding its own organization in in, in allowing them to carry out their own functions in the most effective manner now uh, then so that is this is a good segue into the into management audit so again this is another subset of internal audit and operation audit uh, which looks at improving uh, improvement upon the management of uh, the company so here we look at you know the management decision making process that is in place uh, how the management is taking its decisions whether such decisions are actually in fact in in line with the uh, the, the objectives of the organization and possibly the plan it has for its future so it is a more uh, the appraisal is more at a senior uh, level of uh, activities in the organizations uh, even though so as i said these these several kind of kinds of audits they are varied but there are they are same uh, in in a way because the kind of uh, procedures and uh, audit procedures that you might undertake might be similar uh, but the perspective with which and the reason for which these uh, kind of uh, these audits are carried out is different um so there there is a lot of overlap between these audits but um, we need to understand that the focus of each audit is different um and so in a management audit we are we are actually auditing the management of of the company 
um, and looking at its uh, structure of of its management is it is it in line with better decision making uh, that is better for the organization or no one more so, thing here i wanted to tell you actually you will be also really surprised you know it was not in our audit mandate when our internal auditor was there, we have actually the audit job for the different functions, etc., which he was actually going to. One day, he came actually, Bala, I got one small suggestions. He said, yes. Bala, you know, in each department, each of the people who are working, they all have mini stationary store in their drawer. I said, I don't understand what is it. If I work in a particular department, there are about 15 people are working. Each people are having one or two staplers, 30 staplers are available in that department. Same case with that. Similarly, pen, pencil, pad, ruler, uh, punching machine, there, that, etc. and all. I said, okay, they are all working with their convenience, that is why they are keeping. No, 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 no. In the process, what happens? You are actually spending unnecessarily, unwantedly more of the stationary item which can be reduced. I said, what do you suggest? You take a call, talk to your management. Put up in a central place, a open track where the stationary items, all the stationary items are actually stored there. Whosoever wants, they can just walk in, they can pick it up whenever they want. Let the people keep only what is absolutely essential for them. Say one stapler, you say one ruler, or something like that. All these notebooks, all these punching machines, all these stapler pins, this, that, etc., and other thing and all, so much things you are saying. You ask them to deposit the centralized bill, create the centralized, what you call, sort of the superstore or supermarket, whatever it is, and I'll put it open so you see what is the result. You'll be surprised to know the moment we took a call, we made a implemented the system, almost the next four months, the company was not required to make any purchase of any of the stationary items. We had a surplus. See, these are all small, small things. But what happens since it is again the approach by the person who's taking an initiative and again, which is actually coming as uh, Vicky puts it, what is the value addition you bring to the organization, how it is improve the efficiency, how it is reduce the cost, how it is actually maximize the ease like that. Similarly, on one of the manufacturing units, I think we had a Calcutta, very large area of the manufacturing unit where we have, you know, big ground play football. There were different divisions were there. But there is only a centralized canteen. For everything, people used to walk to the centralized canteen, even for drinking water, drinking tea, coffee, etc. and all this. Now, one of the auditors says that people are unnecessarily wasting the time walking to and fro so much another thing and all. Can we not actually sort out this problem? I'm talking about some 35, 40 years back. Then company took a call. What company has done? Company has installed a water cooler in every department. Company has actually installed that instant coffee vending machine in every department. They said, you need not walk and waste your time so much and all. Whenever you are there, it is at a call very near to buy. This is what they have done. So with this, you know, what happens is uh, you can see small changes, but it makes a lot of difference in the organization's uh, efficiency improvement. Yeah. Right. So all these kind of different audits are in, in the sense of process improvement or an organizational improvement step that the management takes to, to ensure that, you know, the organization is functioning at its full potential and it's steamrolling into, you know, uh, uh, good growth uh, as per its potential. Um, so, yeah, coming back to management audit, uh, you will see there's a lot of uh, overlap between these different kind of kinds of audits. But let's let's get a little bit of clarity in, you know, what you mean by management audit and operational audit and things. So when you talk about management audit, we are looking at qu uh, quality of managing. Um, whereas, you know, in an operational audit, it focuses more on quality of operations. Uh, so when you talk about quality of managing, we are looking at basically decision making uh, process of the of the management and uh, how that is effective and efficient because that has that has a lot of impact on the organizations. Whereas quality of operations, you are limited to uh, only the operations of the organization. Uh, management audit is the audit of management. Like I said, you are auditing the management, whereas operational audit is audit for the management. Uh, and for management, now we're looking at quality of decision making. 
Um, so the basic difference, like I said, is uh, not in the method. The method will be similar. The kind of audit procedures and all will be overlapping, very similar. But the level of appraisal, the kind of focus that we are uh, looking at, the kind of areas that we are possibly, you know, looking at is a little different in management audit. The perspective is different. Um, and uh, the rel so uh, when we talk about management audit, we are looking at the relevance and effectiveness of its aims, duties, and decisions. Are the objectives that it have it has in place is it relevant? Are the policies that you know the management is putting in place relevant to achieving the the objectives that um, the the organization has in place? The process with which you know the the management is putting in place objectives for the company are they are they realistic uh, are they in touch and in tune with uh, industry standards and uh, happenings in the world um, and such things so it is a more higher level appraisal um, when it comes to this kind of an audit uh, now, when we are pitching to the clients, let's look at why, you know, a, a company might require management audit, because there are many times where, you know, you have several managers and several heads um, that also have deficiencies. And sometimes, you know, even if they do want to improve, they do not understand where things are going wrong in their planning, organizing, directing, controlling, coordinating of the organization activities. Um, and why they are not able to achieve the organization objectives. Now, when we look at uh, management audit, it is very, very important to uh, get a statement policy. Uh, a statement policy is basically uh, management giving their full support uh, for the scope and activities that is mentioned in the engagement letter. In all types of internal audit, uh, the kind of uh, importance that is given to that particular audit comes from the, 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 the attitude of the management and how seriously the management and those charged in governance are taking this uh, audit. So the kind of authority that comes uh, for that particular audit comes directly from uh, the support that the audit function gets from uh, the management. So th this is basically highlighted in the statement policy. Uh, again, the location of audit function within the organization. We want to see that auditors are extremely independent in the organization. They do not have any kind of undue influence of any kind of function uh, heads or any kind of functions in the organization. We want to keep them as a silo and who uh, are as third parties examining um, the functioning of the organization. Um, at the same time, uh, we want the management to give them uh, the kind of full access that is required to uh, to all its uh, activities in the organizations. Um, then when we are organizing the management audit, we are looking at, uh, or any kind of internal audit for that matter, we're looking at allocation of personnel. Uh, now, uh, when we talk about uh, allocation of personnel, it is not necessary, like we said again and again, that you need someone with a finance background. Uh, an audit team consists of several different types of uh, members that uh, play different roles. Uh, when you're talking about a CA intern or a CS in article, um, it is you know they they could possibly perform similar functions um once given the right kind of training to to perform the kind of audit procedures that are required the managers and uh, um, it is not necessary that one needs to be a ca or you know mba finance and things like that uh, a commerce a person with a commerce background and experience can also understand these kind of different functions and areas of an organization as per the requirement of the audit. It is extremely important that uh, standards are maintained uh, within the firm to ensure that uh, you know the quality of deliverables is there. Uh, to ensure that you know they continuously need to keep having staff training programs 
to update them on uh, necessary uh, changes in the audit program, necessary changes, changes in requirements of the audit program, um, any kind of uh, legal changes that have under, that have been undertaken, and things like that. Uh, timelines need to be fixed while carrying out the audit uh, in the engagement letter in the beginning only. The frequency of the audit may vary from assignment to assignment. Uh, it can be a year long, long function or, you know, then internal auditor can be appointed for five years or something. Um, whereas, you know, an internal audit for an operational audit or some investigative audit can be, you know, for a particular month or it can be as as in when you know uh, a particular assignment is uh, is completed or any kind of investigative analysis is completed now conducting while conducting management audit it is majorly done through uh, interviews and quest management audit questionnaire uh, where you're continuously talking to people in the organization understanding the processes systems um it is it is it is important to understand that since uh aud auditor is in a in such a place where it has the full understanding of the functioning of the organization almost as much as management does uh so it is it is very important for the auditor to continuously be in touch with the the people in the organization um and at the same time uh they can also serve as 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 a an, in an advisory role to the management uh when it comes to the kind of process improvement that is required to for the management to achieve its goals uh now management audit reports can be can take different different shapes and forms uh, as per requirement of the management they can be you know uh, after a visit to a particular unit for example if if uh, an organization has uh, a unit in uh, singapore if an indian company has a unit in singapore we they want to see the management um, and uh, check the management uh, efficiency in in that unit then the, the audit report can be prepared post the visit of uh, the audit staff to the to uh, to the unit and after carrying out its audit procedures and things whereas they can be periodical reports every three months a report um, can go uh, uh, to the management and the uh, different audit findings for different functions can be highlighted then uh, your special investigations re report and inquiries and then again you have the annual audit report also so these these kind of internal audit reports can take you know different forms uh, according to the requirements of the management uh, there is a possibility that you know these audit reports can even be oral in nature um, it is rare but uh, this is where you know um, it is more of a reporting to the management uh, rather than uh, a report as such uh, on on any kind of functioning mismanagement or any kind of emergencies uh, that uh, can that are that take place in an organization you have interim written reports regular written reports summary written reports or flashcards that are given to the board uh, or the the audit committee where it's a snapshot of, of you know the 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 findings of the audit report so so it is uh it is it is so one must not limit you know audit reports in it in its conventional sense audits can be of they can take shapes in so many different shapes and sizes and these kind of reportings to the management can take shape in so many different uh, forms that it it, it it must not be confined to what we know it uh, conventionally like like uh, abhijit sir said that the value addition can be in so many different forms uh, if, actually, if you are actually right you know when you are actually having a discussion with the management the scope etc and all this way, one pertinent question which has to be asked to them what exactly the organization is looking forward at the end 
surface, you know, so normally if you put in, what the requirement of the customer? What is that they are looking for from us? That has to be driven in the very first stage itself. So that is centering around the point apart from other reporting, etc. and all these things. And at the end of the day, if you deliver what the customer wants actually in the right quality, in the professional way, supported by the facts and figures, I think we have done with the job. That is what and, it is required. Yeah. Right. If one uh, did, you know, one, had to one, give a difference. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, one input is normally in management audit report. Till the time the, the user department on whom the audit is done reviews the final report and give their comments, including the materiality of high risk or low risk or whatever, it will not be issued mainly from the perspective that once you issue it and goes up for review, then they'll say, oh, we never know that it was written like this, you know. So in management audit, it is very, very important that the report has the consent of the views expressed by the auditor what action they do, sometimes it's also covered, but it is very important that their heads are also in when the final report is submitted. This is very, very critical. Yeah, absolutely, you're right, because whenever any observations, anything which is actually there, it is always referred to the concerned department. Their comments are actually obtained, their concurrence is actually taken, and then only the report is issued. 100% I am in agreement with you. Yes, yes, yes. All the all the target dates and the responsibilities are fixed after discussion only. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is right. Because you know what happens if you don't do that, then you know the, the question comes to argument and counter. I never knew it. Is it like that? I'm seeing it for the first time. All these sort of uh, things are yeah. actually possible. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, Kinder, uh, go ahead. Now, if one did have to give a deliverable, any kind of report uh, to the management, then, uh, you know, it consists of the title, the objectives of the audit, the scope of audit, the different kind of uh, findings, conclusions, uh, any opinions, um, the audit procedures performed. Now, here we are looking at material uh, uh, observations and uh, with the the viewpoint that you know uh, it is to ensure the overall functioning of the management and the company uh, the recommendations are also after you know uh, uh, discussing with the management uh, and uh, audit uh, auditees views on the observations uh, that are being highlighted are also considered and a summary an executive summary can also be prepared for the management audit report so management audit questionnaire it is basically it is basically you know the questions that are asked to the management while carrying out uh, this uh, audit where we are trying to understand the decision making process and the role of management in the organization um, and they are usually yes no not applicable or any kind of um, in, uh, subjective answer that is possibly required now, uh, so when we're looking at internal and audit, external audits, it is extremely important to understand what needs are catered to. So for example, external audits are for uh, shareholders and uh, the stakeholders in general. So this, their uh, audience and the readers of these audit, of external audit reports is, is uh, much higher and serves a different purpose then when it comes to an internal audit report um internal audit so external audit is usually uh, giving you a true and fair uh, view of the financial statements that the company puts out into the public and the auditor basically gives its assurance for its true and fair view and uh, it is limited to that but it is open to um, the scrutiny by a lot of different types of audiences and readers whereas internal audit report uh the the readers are uh extremely 
specific and uh, it's mostly usually management uh, and uh, they serve a particular purpose in the organization so uh, you know there must always be a statement in the audit report that it is not for the general uh, you know viewing and readers of of uh, yeah uh, the, the it's 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 for a particular purpose and it must be taken in that context only and no it it must it must not be taken out of context where you know uh uh entire public is reading it uh for uh, and and interpreting it in different kinds of ways because the internal audit reports are generated for certain uh, purposes in the organization and they must not be taken out of context um, otherwise you know it would be it would be misleading for any kind of readers um so uh, and like i said they serve different purposes uh, internal audit is more for the internal uh, for functioning of the organization whereas external audit is for external parties uh, to the organization although they have a lot of overlapping areas for example even external auditors are checking your internal functions procedures systems in place uh, they they are actually uh, complementing each other where uh, external auditors so the first thing they do is uh, understand if there is an internal audit function in place um, if there is they check the uh, the 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 competency of the internal auditor the kind of uh, audit procedures that the internal auditor uh, takes into consideration um, and uh, it it external auditors have been given the freedom to uh, rely on the work of the internal auditor for their own audit however it is said that the the absolute responsibility for the external if, or external statutory audit lies with the external auditor and then they cannot come back to the internal auditor and say that uh, you know uh, we didn't look at uh, this is not our work this is the internal auditor's work so the responsibility goes on them that is not allowed so uh, again, the internal auditor assists the external or statutory audit function. Um, and uh, internal audit it has a broader scope compared to external audit. External audit does not get into uh, follow ups and any kind of improvement processes and things like that. Although they may come across, uh, you know, such things and communicate to the management, but it is not the purpose of the external audit. Whereas the purpose of the internal audit too is to understand uh, these kind of improvements that can possibly take place to check if things are functioning as per plan and things like that. Now, there is a, there is a lot of uh, uh, issues that auditors face uh, while conducting an audit. Um, like like we discussed earlier that you know they think that they are there to police the functions of the organization they're there to criticize um, the the employees of the organization and uh, you know i highlight where things are going wrong and um, so people are scared that you know punitive action might be taken by superiors if the auditor identifies deficiencies uh, while conducting audit, um, then so so these kind of things, any kind of fear of changes that that the auditor may bring about, um, so these kind of um, uh, things about audit makes you know the employees pretty resistant to um, these kind of uh, to the internal auditor. Uh, the management may, uh, you know, will possibly be uh, for the internal audit and, you know, uh, exercising the function of the internal audit in the best possible manner. But if the if the same uh, is not communicated to its employees uh, in a proper manner, then it becomes very difficult for the internal auditor to carry out its audit because uh, in, a, in, 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 in its day-to-day -day internal audit function, the internal auditor is communicating 
communicating with the actual uh, employees of the company, getting their data, uh, checking the controls and things by communicating uh, with the uh, employees of the organization. Uh, but there are also uh, cases where, you know, uh, auditor is insensitive it is always always it comes with the attitude of fault finding um and uh, it, it keeps highlighting rather than looking at the bigger picture uh it keeps highlighting uh, smaller irrelevant irrelevant deficiencies uh in the organization in the processes or or uh, of the employees and things uh, auditor is rude um you know style of talking and uh communicate communicating is not on point then you know these guys these, these are uh, the kind of difficulties and issues that may arise uh in the audit um so when we're, we're looking at these kind of issues we need to understand that we the kind of attitude that the that the internal auditor want needs to have is of a constructive criticism of of uh you know realizing mistakes and improving upon them as a team um the reporting methods are uh not very intrusive uh in the day-to-day -day processes of the employees uh understanding that the employees have their daily activities and tasks to be undertaken uh on top of which they need to help the auditors and it, it must be a more participative approach where even the employees feel like they are involved in the improvement of the process and the company and for the well-being of the company and the entire function is uh, carried out for the well-being of the company and the employees as a whole it is difficult actually for an internal auditor because it is you know uh, working on a tight rope situation actually many places people may not come forward may feel may not reveal the information they will give the top information they will hide the information they will keep quiet all those things will be actually there so initially it will be difficult for the internal auditor but his behavior his approach etc he has to establish himself that he is also working for the organization that is the thing i had a very very tough time in one of the occasions because the company had experiences in multi locations in some of the places there was some you know miss happening but there actually the board assigned the job to me i was actually working as a financial controller i have been told you take up internal audit job for a period of 3 years because you worked earlier as an internal auditor because there are certain things are there we want you to do it i said sir i don't want to make a career internal auditor i am happy with the finance function only. They said, no, 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 you have to do it. I started doing it. When I started doing it, what happens is really, really in couple of locations, there were a lot of, you know, misdeed which has been happening because of that, the extent in which it has gone, some of the people have actually lost their job. That is the end result. In two or three locations, when it happened, in fourth location, I went, oh my God, I don't know who's going to lose the job this time, yeah, Bala has come. You know, this sort of the feeling is also created. But of course, all said and done, one has to actually act. Behavior is very, very important. You have to give the confidence. You have to tell them, we are doing the interest of the organization. It will be good for you and other things and all. Those sort of things is there. Otherwise, all said and done, the initial year, it is going to be a little difficult. To be very frank with you, I agree with you. Whatever the points you are actually put up. Even Abhijit also will agree. He has been an internal auditor for such a long time. You would also face such a situation. See, one thing I want to share, like Bert Bala says, is that is why in multinational companies, from HR, it is moved from HR to this on this behavioral aspect. So, you know, like you said about targets, Kinjal. So, there are two types of targets in our performance appraisal. One is the financial target, the other is the individual target. And in the individual target, we, that's why we have an item for behavior and that behavior will include how good is that person towards governance, you know, like say whether when you hospitality, whether the bills are in. So that is one. The second is how does that person behave with respect to peers, with respect to audit, with respect to, you know, superiors. And there we cover in order to see, to extract who is the one who is not able to be part of this culture? And second is, how do we train him? It is not the question of firing, but it is a question of bringing back 
him to that. Uh, so in many MNCs, especially at least we have this and we try to see that how he can be counseled to bring back to an approach of behavioral, which is sound in order to reflect right to the external auditor or external internal auditor or it because audit does not mean finance. There are so many audits, the environmental audit, it is relating to uh, several audits these days. And so it is a um, uh, mere this thing. I want to just conclude because I have to leave for, you know, this is an amazing uh, session. Uh, myself being more a chartered accountant and a company secretary i have been you know also a business head and but what is all there will be role for a company secretary what is important to assess is what is the competency required in order to do uh, an internal auditor or a, and what does the competency that the people in that organization have and the gap analysis need to be addressed by the company secretary like you was talking about some in in uh, interns or whatever going for in my life in 30 years of several company internal auditor i will never get an trainee or an article because we always ask for a sectoral expert in that particular area. In internal audit, there are three areas. Functional expertise, sectoral expertise, and company expertise. External may not, may not know that. So every company secretary organization, there may be scope to do it. But whether you are capable of doing it is for that company to attend it. And that capability can only be done by a competency gap analysis. And that competency gap analysis need to be done by the senior partners to look at what sector we need to see. That is why you see Pricewaterhouse has gone into sector by signing. Automobile will be signed by one. It is because they feel that the credibility of what they say and what they write has got some sanctity towards it. Uh, thanks, thanks for a wonderful uh, session. Not only that, nowadays, the most, of the, most of the thing what we are talking about, you know, can be overcome because of the digitalization. Because when the companies are working on the ERP, the internal auditor can be given the limited access to the purpose of the audit, etc., or all this thing in terms of the documentation, presentation, information, etc. So that what happened, most of the thing can be actually reduced to the extent by the digitalizations. It is only the comments and observations, so one-to-one -one talk. That only will take me to the greater extent. I think digitalization also will help actually in strengthening this area. In my opinion, future days are going to be more of digitalization rather than, you know, the conventional one-to-one -one sitting across physical. That is not going to be the case in future. Yeah. You are perfectly right, sir. Chartered Accountant Institute was one step ahead because they have the information system audit as an awareness and the knowledge. So Deepti and others, you know, Manish Guptaji, whatever within the, they have to see in the curriculum how in company secretary, information system is also in, in at a higher level because nobody looks at, look at nowadays, everything is controlled by ERPs. So when I, when I want to look at whether somebody has followed the procedure, I just make an exceptional list the ICF uh, FR and the ICO FR, when it is taken out by the auditors, this server is sitting somewhere in cloud in some other country. How does he take it? He just takes an exceptional report, whether it was followed, access controls are followed or not followed. And so the Institute of Company Secretary, if they are very, very clear that there is a role for CS in this, has to see that IS information system audit awareness and as a curriculum needs to be brought in because in this only experience and hands-on, like you said, which, why, it is more about how they do it and what they do it rather than why they do it because why comes. And so anyone needs to look at it that way. I think then it will be great for CS people. Thanks. Thanks for your thing. I think we have answered all the questions and all the queries answered, right? So we can close this webinar. Yes, we can definitely close. Before that, I would like to definitely, definitely want to express my sincere appreciation to Pinjal, who has actually brought out very, very lucidly and brought out various issues relating to this important topic. She has given a very clear cut message. There are a lot of things which can be done in the area of the internal audit and management audit. Audit by the company secretary, there's a lot of scope which is actually open to them. That is a message which I am really, really getting. 
we are capable of doing this and in fact there are already people doing it and we should go in a larger way to strengthen our area in this and prove our competency hats off to teacher thanks a lot thank you so much thanks thanks mr abhijit for your time your inputs you are very uh, very sharing and i hope the student perform well today <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for everything thank you for having me in this thank you thanks a lot, lot abhijit for your time and your sharing of the experience yeah thank, thank you thank you thank you mr bala thanks all the participants please thanks for your time thanks kinjal thank you mr abhijit once again Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Thank you.